you're probably going to wonder why the voice sounds weird in a bit. That's because the video was too long and had to speed it up. Also, I would have done something easier, but I'm getting graded here, so this is at least a bit more entertaining. To start, what's a timeline? Well, a timeline is a line with time on it. It's pretty self-explanatory. On this timeline, there are four eras. Geologists did this so it'd be easier for people to understand. That's also probably because we're not geologists. The four eras in order are Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. The Precambrian era was the longest out of the four, it being 87% of the timeline. The Earth was created 4.6 billion years ago when Thea crashed into the Earth. This marked the beginning of this era. The earliest form of multi-cell life forms was the Idiocarans that were found in fossils 600 million years ago. The only part of Canada that existed at the time was a Canadian shield. Accomplished by uplifting, these mountains were said to be at least 12,000 meters tall, bigger than the mountains that exist today. By the way, if you're wondering how geologists know how old these rocks are, they do something called radiometric dating. If you don't know this, don't worry, you probably already have these notes written down. Just reread them, you'll be fine. Unless you used it for fire, then you're just screwed. Now that that's out of the way, there are still 570 million years left. The remaining 570 million years are divided into three eras if you haven't guessed already, Paleozoic being the biggest of the three. Here's a fun fact, it was said that North America was located near the equator. This created a tropical environment that allowed organisms such as zooplankton or algae and microorganisms to flourish, eventually producing the vast amount of crude oil for our consumption. Then, about 100 million years later, all the continents collided and created the supercontinent of Pangaea. Because of this, it caused the eastern part of the North American plate to impact with the western coast of Africa and Eurasia. This ultimately created the Appalachian Mountains. During this period, there was at least five mass extinctions. Due to this, a lot of Earth's species disappeared while new and higher number of species appeared. The Paleozoic Era was also known for its explosion of animals, most notably the dinosaurs, which led to the Mesozoic Era. There was an event that marked the division of these two eras. The event that split both of these eras was the greatest mass extinction that the Earth has ever seen. It had wiped out 95% of marine life and 70% of land life, allowing dinosaurs to be the lords of the Earth. The Mesozoic Era was also known as the Age of Dinosaurs. This era was divided into three periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. If you don't know what these are, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to go into detail with these. This era also marked the beginning of the breakup of Pangaea. During the breakup, Pangaea split into two great continents named Laurasia and Gondwana. Laurasia would then split into North America and Eurasia, and Gondwana would then split into South America, Australia, Africa, Antarctica, and India. After the Mesozoic Era, India collided with Eurasia and created the Himalayas. The era when this happened is called Cenozoic. Cenozoic, meaning new life, is also known as the Age of Mammals. This is also the era that we live in today. The reason why Cenozoic is known as that is because dinosaurs died out, allowing mammals such as humans to become more dominant. Also during this era, the world had an ice age 2 million years ago. Glaciers during this period were like large pieces of sandpaper that gouged the Earth's land. Because of this, the Appalachian Mountains and Canadian Shield was rounded. The last ice age was 6,000 years ago, but glaciers still stand today. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. If there's a next time.